In this screencast, we continue our study of minimum spanning tree algorithms, and we're going to look specifically at Kruskal's and Prim's algorithms. We're also going to go into the interior of Laysan Island, which is a huge nesting ground for birds. Here we have some juvenile frigate birds, possibly other species, and a brown noddy, a juvenile brown booby, the birds here are not afraid of humans because they haven't ever experienced any danger from land-based predators. This is a tropic bird. A lot of the birds here nest in the ground. You have to be careful. You could punch through the soil, the sand, into a burrow. And there's two species left on this island that only exist on this island. This is the lay sand finch. There's actually six of them in this water hole. And here's the famous lay sand ducks that live in this hypersaline pond that characterizes Laysan Lace Island. And that's Susan, Susan Middleton, who is photographing them for her book that she did with David Lichfager. Uh, some of these ducks were later relocated to Midway Island so that they would have a safe population in case a storm hit one of the islands. OK, back to algorithms. We're going to look at Krusko's algorithm and Prim's algorithm for minimum spanning trees. And one cool thing about these is they show how we can use ADTs that we studied in previous units to do bigger things. So Kruskal's is going to use the union find uh, as well as sorting. And Prim's is going to use the priority queues. The basic idea of Kruskal's algorithm, uh, each of these algorithms is, is greedy in its own way. So Kruskal says, well, if we want a minimum spanning tree, then let's just sort the edges in a non-decreasing order. And so our list will have the cheapest edge first. Let's add that to our tree first and then repeat. And so for each subsequent edge, we're going to say, does this edge create a cycle? Um, if it doesn't, then we're going to add it. And that will guarantee to use all the cheapest edges first. So the big question, of course, is whether adding an edge will create a cycle. And the Kruskal's answers that by maintaining a disjoint set data structure to determine whether an edge connects vertices in two different components or not. So it's very similar to the connected components algorithm that we saw in the unit on union find. Uh, that algorithm would start by making each vertex in its own set. And then for each edge in the graph, it would then check to see if the two vertices have already been put into the same set. And if not, it would do the union of those sets. So essentially, it's constructing a set of sets where each set will be the connected components of the graph. Kruskal follows the same structure. So for each vertex, we're going to make it into its own singleton set in the disjoint set data structure. And here's the sort the edges. So here's the greedy strategy. We're going to um, do it in non-decreasing order. In other words, cheapest ones first by the weight. And in that order, we'll consider each edge, this line here. And um, if the, the fine sets of the two vertices connected by the edge are equal, that means that there is already some portion of the spanning tree that creates a path between those vertices. Um, if they're not equal, then this edge is safe for A. So we're constructing the set A. I didn't mention at the beginning, of course, we start A as being the empty set. And so we now add to A whatever edges we had before and this edge. And so this, is con this part here is constructing the tree, adding a new edge to the tree, because we know that the, um, this edge will be safe for A. And this union here is just to keep track of which um, vertices have been collected together in the same component. Now, a nice thing about Kruskal's algorithm is it will work on graphs that have more than one component. It will find a spanning tree for each component. Well, let's run an example now. I'm going to use this airline map that I lifted from a uh, author who lives on the East Coast, probably in Providence. So we're going to run Kruskal's algorithm here. Um, I'm not going to make the union find a disjoint set data set a data structure explicit. That would be too much drawing. We're going to have to do that implicitly. Uh, but the uh, the tree, also the A tree here, I will indicate by just drawing blue lines in the graph. And we're just going to have to keep in mind that any vertices that are in a connected graph of, of the blue lines are also going to be in the same set in the union find data structure. So the first thing we do is for each vertex, after we've set A to be empty, for each vertex we make a set out of it. So imagine each of these vertices is in its own set. 
And then we're going to sort the edges into non-decreasing order. And I've already done that here. Hopefully I got them all. And then for each edge in the graph, uh, taken in non-decreasing order, in other words, going down this list, we check to see are the two vertices connected uh, already connected. And we do that checking by seeing are they in the same set. And if it's not in the same set, we will add that edge. So let's proceed. So Providence JFK, of course, aren't in here because we haven't done anything yet. And so we add that to our spanning tree. And now the union fine will put JFK and PVD in the same set. Uh, JFK, BWI, they aren't in the same set yet. So add this edge. We are greedily taking the cheapest edge first. Boston, the JFK, not in the same set. So right now we're growing a set of connected elements here. Uh, SFO to LAX. Now notice here's a feature of Kruskal's algorithm. It can go hop off and work in another part of the graph. So we now have another set of more than one element in the union find data structure corresponding to this little fragment of a spanning tree over here. Next one, uh, or BWI. Um, they aren't connected yet. So we'll check that one off. Uh, ORD JFK. Now notice that there is a path between them. So the union find data structure would say that yes, these are in the same set. Um, and keep in mind that that data structure is different than this one. It's those compressed trees. Um, so we'll check this one off in red. ORD DFW. Nobody is connected to DFW yet, so we add this edge. And the union find union's DFW set with the ORD set. ORD PVD. They're in the same set, nothing happens. Or Boston, they're in the same set, nothing happens. BWI, MIA, we got a new one here. Growing in this big East Coast set here. JFK, MIA, that's redundant. DFW, MIA, that's already in the same set. LAX, DFW. Now here's a case where we have two non-trivial sets in the Union Find data structure. You know, this would probably be compressed by now because of all our searches. Remember the path compression, whatever the root node was, which was probably going to be um, uh, PVD or JFK because they were the first ones added, would be the root node of this union find data structure. And, and the root node of this one would be one of these two nodes, and it would say they're different. Uh, and then it would probably have, uh, the rank would probably be higher of one of these two. Remember that rank stuff from union find. So this set in the union find data structure would probably be a, a subset of that. But I digress. All the stuff I just said is about Union Find rather than Kruskal's, uh, just to show that you know that stuff is happening here and it has a real application. Uh, but the edge that we actually are adding here is the LAX DFW edge, which has now um, actually has now completed the minimum spanning tree. Now the algorithm as written would keep going. It would check Boston MIA and it would say uh, they're already the same one DFW. JFK are already in the same one, uh, SFO, DFW, and so on. Can you think of a way to not do this extra work? Well, what about the basic quantitative fact that the number of edges is equal to the number of vertices minus one? And so how many vertices? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And how many edges had we added up to that point? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once, once we've added that eighth edge, we know we are done. And we don't have to do any of that rest. And you could add that to the code here to uh, speed it up a bit. It would really only speed up uh, highly dense graphs. So let's do the analysis now. Constant time. Now we have uh, two loops here that involve the uh, union find operations, which we know is uses that alpha, very slow growing function alpha that really is for all practical purposes constant, but we'll write it down here. So here's an order of v loop with alpha of v operations. So we'll write that. And then this loop here is for each edge. So it's going to be order of e. And then it has um, this stuff here, which is more union find stuff, which is also alpha a V, not E, because it depends on the number of vertices that are being put into these sets. So this one is order of E times alpha of V. Okay. And of course, we've got a sort. And we know that the best sort we can do, except under very special circumstances, is order of E log E. We have order of V plus order of E 
times alpha v, so combining those two terms, plus the sort, order of e log e. So that's the time, but we can simplify. One thing we're going to do is we're going to note that uh, this uh, number of edges is number of vertices minus 1 is true for a tree. If in a connected graph, you can have more edges. Uh, so e is an upper bound on v. So that means that we can replace the v here with the e to simplify. So we're going to turn this into order e plus e alpha v, which is simply order e alpha v. But then uh, we're also going to note that alpha v, a very slow growing function, is bounded from above by log v and by the reasoning we, we just gave is bounded above by log e. So we can now rewrite this whole thing as order of e for the e plus e that we turn that into log e for our reasoning that this is bounded by log v which is bounded by log e um, plus the same thing. So now we've just reduced it to this simple term order of e log e. Now the textbook analysis takes one further step, even though this seems simple enough, to put v back into the expression, partly because it is partly a function of v, and also because our analysis of Prim's algorithm is going to, uh, we want to make the result comparable to that of Prim's algorithm. So to do what they're going to do in this step, we have to do a little bit of extra stuff here. We're going to note that e is bounded from above by v squared. You can't have more edges than you have pairs of vertices. And so if you take the log of both sides of that, you get the log of e is big O, or bounded, by 2 log v, um, which is, of course, order of log v. So we can replace the log e here with uh, log v by that bounding. So we're going to get the final expression O of e log v is the result of this analysis. And so remember that one because we'll compare it to Prim's. So Kruskal's algorithm is a very good algorithm, has the advantage of being able to um, work with a disconnected graph as well as a you know, one with multiple um, components with, as well as one with single components. And uh, now we will compare it to Prim's. That concludes our introduction to Kruskal's algorithm. To keep this podcast short, I'm going to leave Prim's for the next one. And we'll also leave the lay sand ducks to happily waddle about their hypersaline pond.